Guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers, and now on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today, I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of In Case of Emergency. So, y'all want to go ahead and tell you about uh, the uh, aff the affiliate that I am now part of. I am now an affiliate of Green Man Gaming, which means there's going to be a link in the description of each video. Y'all click on that link, you get taken to their website, you get all you get discounts on all the latest and greatest games, and I get a commission for whatever y'all buy. So, anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. There we go. All right. <clears throat> West shuffles his feet and stares at the wooden beams of the dock. Yeah, yeah, marriage sucks, we know. Elizabeth, I forget her name was Elizabeth. Wow, what a name. Elizabeth blinks a few times in surprise. Marriage doesn't suck. It's important. That's why it should be between people who love each other. Both Wes and Luke frown at that. I'm just tired of our family starting to control every aspect of our lives. There's a difference between being in control and having a responsibility. I know the difference. That's why I was trying to help her. Because you think there's some sort of a real love out there for her? I know there is. Elizabeth well, snaps so fast that even Luke takes a step back, surprised by her outburst. Listen, I was trying to help Electra flee the city last night. Why would she why would she murder her father if she was already leaving? Not only that, our ship was grounded because of the lockdown the city went into after he was found at comatose. It would have been counterproductive to draw attention to that night. Our ship? Elizabeth lips disappear into a tight grimace, but she doesn't correct herself. I've told you everything you need to know. It wasn't Electra. Now, I'm going to find a boat that's willing to risk being fired on for a sack of gold, and Electra and I are going to leave this godforsaken city. Are you going to try and stop us? She stares at you expectantly. She looks like she hasn't slept in days, but under the layer of immediate exhaustion is a more, is a more long-standing one. She's unhappy in her current life. You've seen that look before, most notably in your very own mirror. The ship is... the ship is... the ship out here... This, this ship out, the ship out is her peregrine. A chance for a uh, life better than the one she's leaving behind. Luke. Luke, what do you think? I think you're going to regret this. You think you know what you want right now, but those feelings are going to are going to come to an end. You care more about how you feel in this moment than the people who have to live with the consequences of you leaving forever. Look at what happened when, when Lord Boja didn't wake up. The whole city is just sitting on its hands until something is done about it. Cities aren't made of feelings or love or even people. They're made of things. Wait, but... But, but, but they're like, uh, feelings, love, and people are things. <laughs> Luke, you're not making sense. Emotions are just natural disasters that things have to withstand. Actually, I like that line. That's a good line. Emotions are just the natural disasters that things have to withstand. I'm gonna write that down. That's really good. <laughs> I'm gonna use that in a conversation one day. He crosses his arms and tries to stare her down, but Elizabeth's glare is stronger. He eventually has to look away. Wes's thoughts? Wes, what do you think? He shakes his head and shrugs in resignation. Life is short. She should be free to do what she wants. Maybe she's running away from her problems, but once she's gone, they won't be hers anymore. She should follow her heart. He sounds like he's trying to convince himself of what he's saying, unsuccessfully. Um, I think she should... Ah... Uh... Uh, no. I think you're making the wrong call. You can't just run away from things because you don't like them. You have to deal with them one way or another. West stares, uh, West stares at a matted coil of rope that's been abandoned on the harbor, avoiding eye contact. I don't need your approval. She turns from you and stomps down the dock, shivering. Oh. Oh, look, Patty's Pub. Not really, it's nicer than Patty's Pub. Back in the tavern, only Remus remains at the table. So, any new developments? Where's Cedric? <laughs> Did Cedric leave? He retired to a room upstairs. He wasn't feeling very well. Oh, you nod. He looked like he needed rest. Now there was, was Elizarin. I talked to her just now. She convinced that, she's convinced that Electra's not guilty. She says they were together the entire night. They're trying to run away together. Which still doesn't answer how Lord Boshia could have been drinking hemlock for days and only collapsed now. West sighs. We're getting nowhere. We should just tell the city we have something important to do and, just, and we need to leave. If it comes to that, we will. In the meantime, you should get some rest. Crossing the bridge will allow us to reach the base of Grim Mountain in only a day's travel. You want to be at your best. Wes nods reluctantly as he rises from his seat. I'm headed up to my room. Well, then I'm finally going to... Going to then I'm finally going to go track down my book. See ya! See ya! As you get up to leave, Remus tells you, Good work today, Kieran. Remus appraises you with an approving eye. Thanks, I didn't solve the case. Uh, I'll just say thanks. Thanks. What you're doing may not seem like much now, but these are the skills that befit a sword bearer such as yourself. 
Asking questions and breaking into homes? Problem solving. I don't know, it doesn't feel like I'm solving anything. Remus chuckles at that, his smile revealing a wolfish, ha, <laughs> grin. There's no denying that the guy has aged well. He's got that classic movie star charisma going for him, and the kind that makes you feel starstruck to be in his presence. By the way, no one noticed you in town. Why doesn't anyone recognize the king? One second, y'all, let me have a sip of my coffee. Mmm, even cold, it's still pretty decent. Alright. Remus laughs, tapping the circlet around his head. You're very observant, Kieran. You can't help but smile with pride, your pulse quickening a little. The crown helps. It's enchanted, you see. Try it. He removes the circlet from his head and passes it to you. It's made of a lightweight metal and feels almost flimsy in your hands. When you try to place it on your head, it's impossible for you to make it fit. It springs off your head like it's made of cheap aluminum. As you hand it back to him, you notice that several people in the tavern have turned towards your table, whispering amongst themselves. When Remus replaces the circlet around his head, the whispering subsides, and the people blink as they readjust their gaze towards their drinks. What happened? It's quite heavy for me, but it's too light to fit on anyone else's head. Much like your sword, you're the only one that can remove it from wherever it's placed. It makes the wearer invisible. Not invisible, as in not visible, but simply unseen. The best rulers should be judged and seen by their deeds, not their persons. I don't they'll see you, but they don't recognize you. Like, people can see without realizing who you are? Very good. If you can imagine a painting, one doesn't need to know that the painting's artist exists to appreciate it. After all, the best art is universal, without identifiable traits. That doesn't mean that the artist doesn't exist. The art could not exist without him. But that the artist remains latent, hidden in the background. The crown helps me do just that. Oh, that's smart. So the king is, a cl is clever and handsome. Primus chuckles, a deep bass sound that makes the fur on the back of your neck stand on end. Flattery will get you everywhere, you know. That's the kind, that's the kind of what I'm hoping for. The sound of coughing upstairs interrupts your train of thought. Remus glances towards the stairs. You should go back, you should go check on your friend, you nod. You probably should see if Cedric's okay. Go to Cedric's room. You knock on the door to Cedric's room. Hey, are you feeling okay? There's a non-committal mumble from the other side of the door. Can I come in? Another vague moan of pain. I'm taking that as a yes. You pull open the door to see Cedric lying in bed, his face pale and damp with sweat. The sheets are crumpled around him like he's been, like he's been tossing and turning. Hey, are you feeling any better? I... His answer is interrupted by a series of hacking coughs. I didn't get enough sleep last night. I'll be fine. He turns his head to you as you take a seat at the foot of the bed. I just need some rest. How's the murder case going? Nothing new. Elizarin and Electra were trying to run away last night, which... Doesn't actually tell us anything about Lord Bozia. Cleric motions weakly towards his towards his cheek, then points to you. That from an ally? You touch the same spot on your face and wince in pain. The place you got punched is still tender. Yeah, you know her? Not that well. I know her through Electra, so a friend of a friend. What did you do? Hey, I didn't do anything. She has issues. She has to be she had to be wearing a ring on the hand she hit me with. A ring? What did it look like? I don't know. She was wearing gloves. Cedric cocks his head and stares at the bruise on your face, as though it might reveal the cut and carrot of the ring you were punched with. Did she say anything about it? Where she got it from? Uh, no. You think it's special? I just thought, since Lord Bogia's ring was missing and all, you think she killed him? No! I mean, I don't think so. I just know that the ring was supposed to go to Electra when she got married. It's a family heirloom. She was supposed to exchange rings with that prince she was engaged to. The marriage that she was running away from. Yeah, so if she wanted to give that, give that ring to someone else, Cedric sort of stares at you meaningfully. Hmm. She wanted to give it to Elizarin. Cedric nods. So Electra stole the ring from her dad before she left. She must have taken it that night. But for all we know, she was already poisoned by then, which doesn't help us. Cedric sort of closes his eyes and rests his head on the thin pillow. I'm glad she worked up the courage to leave. She tried before, but she's not the best at standing up for herself. One disappointed look and she'd crumble. It sounds like you know her pretty well. We weren't together, if that's what you're asking. We were just friends. I told you, Wes and I came down here to run a, to run a favor for the Bozians. They asked for us to recover some relics from their family mausoleum. The place was crawling with ghosts. That's where I got the sword, which they let me keep, as well as the signet ring that Lord Bozy always wears. We had a lot of free time back then, so we hung around, and the Bosius threw us this lavish party in their home. It lasted a few days. 
Wes was obviously busy chasing tails, so Electra and I just hung out a lot during the show during the downtime. Such excise like he's remembering a bittersweet memory. That was our last time out before the void started showing up. Such frowns, clutching his chest as he starts to hack violently. He coughs into his elbow, the wet timber of his cough sounding worse than usual. Hey, are you alright? You move up to the bed to reach out for him when your hand hits something hard and long under the covers. Oh god! Oh, okay. Ripping off the sheet has not what I was thinking. Ripping off the sheets, you reveal the dark green scabbard the Bogia short sword wedged under Cedric's thigh. Seriously? What do you do? You pull the sword out from under him, and an immediate wave of nausea overtakes you. There's a strange humming sound emanating from your own blade that pierces your ears. You throw down the blade and let it clatter to the floor. The sensation stops. Cedric stares at you, wiping something pink from his mouth. It's blood. That blade is super fucking cursed, man! It's a good luck charm. It's supposed to ward against stuff like that. Cedric pushes himself into a sitting position, licking the blood from his lips. There's blood on his arm and a spatter of the stuff on his sheets. Give it back, he says with more energy than you've seen him muster all day. There's something wrong with that thing. I didn't feel anything when I picked it up. <clears throat> You're coughing blood. You're literally coughing up blood. It's just, I care about it, okay? I know that sounds stupid. It's not s It is stupid. It is stupid. This thing is literally killing you. Cedric's nose wrinkles like he's going to say something, and he changes his mind. Fine. You're right. Keep the sword without wearing it. If the sword is that important to you, you can hang on to it. You should probably shouldn't touch it. That doesn't mean you can't keep it around, but that doesn't mean you can't keep it around. Thanks. I appreciate that. The two of you sit in silence for a moment. He looks a lot better now that he doesn't have the sword on him. It feels ironic that some that something that was supposed to protect him turned out to be what was making him sick. Huh. But wasn't do you think we'll have to pay for these? Cedric stares down at his sheets speckled with blood, his eyebrows scrunching together in contemplation. That sword, you said you found it with the ring? Yeah, they were both family heirlooms. They're supposed to bring health and fortune to the bearer. Fat lot of good that did me. But Lord Boshia wore the ring too, longer than anyone else, and he was fine. And the same night he gets sick, he's found without the ring. What are you saying? Why would similar objects make one person sick and another person not sick? I think there's someone we need to go visit. Oh... I feel like, oh, interesting. I feel like maybe if, okay, maybe he grew depend, his body actually grew physically and chemically dependent on the ring itself. And then once it was removed, his body, he went into system shock and died. That same exact thing can happen with a longtime smoker goes uh, cold turkey on, on, on nicotine. They, they, it can literally kill them. So, Hmm, interesting. Okay. Un un uh unexpected development. <clears throat> maybe the ring killed him. <clears throat> or maybe his daughter accidentally did when she removed the ring, not knowing about the uh awful debuff that he would receive. <clears throat> Wait, he's not dead though. They keep saying he's alive, and then he's dead. I'm confused. <laughs> you spring to your feet before the idea can escape you. Still a half formed thing. <clears throat> Nebulous and only existing in that funny short-term memory space where you do math in your head. You need to get to the bush just before you forget. You work out the details on the way. Where are we going? You nearly crash into Luke in the doorway of the tavern. Hey! You figured it out? Oh, come on! Oh, come on! I thought we were done for today! Luke sighs and pinches his brow, but there's no time to wait. Someone grabs him by the back of the shirt and drags him along the cobble roads. The crickets are chirping when you arrive. The paved road of the Bojia Manor ends in a heavy wrought iron gate, black bars twisting into sharp spikes at the top. The guards, after some convincing and name dropping, reluctantly lead you to Lord Bojia's room and rap on the door. There's a shuffling from the other side. One moment! I like this music. Electra opens the door, dressed like she's gotten in from a day outside, or maybe she maybe like she's just about to head out. Her eyes widen when she sees you. Um, can we talk? Hey, can we talk for a minute? Electra blanches. I suspect this is a conversation we should have privately. He nods to the guards, who shuffle reluctantly in place, hesitant to vacate the area. It takes another stern look before they march down the stairs, and Electra closes the heavy, do heavy wooden door behind them with a click. The room is just as you left it. Through a though a window has been cracked to let in the cool night air, the drapes move gently in the wind. Lord Bogia breathes shallowly in bed, the rise and fall of his chest barely perceptible. You want to talk to me about what happened to my father? Yes, but... Where's Elizabeth? You kind of needed her for this. Your clever re reveal hinges on it. In the meantime, you can buy time by pacing back and forth across the thick carpet. 
Tapping your shin and louve, toking on a pipe. Allie? Oh, Allie. Okay, not ally. Allie. Allie, what does she have to do with anything? Ha! She's walked right into your trap. Why, she has everything to do with this. After all, she's hiding. The armoire. Here! You cross the bed and fling open the doors of the armoire. Oh, shit! Dust, more dust, and a lizard pressed into a corner filled with spare drapery, coughing into her elbow. In the moonlight, you're sure you, you're sure you see it. There's a spray of blood when she coughs. Let your moves intercept you, placing herself between you and the closet. What do you want with her? Have a look. Electra regards you suspiciously before turning around. It takes her a moment to ascertain what's happening to Elizarin. It's happening as Elizarin pulls her sleeve towards her chest, then it hits her. Allie, what happened? She rushes to her side, wrapping the arm around Elizarin's shoulder. She holds her close, gently wiping the blood from her lips. You're not well. I should have done something. We should have gotten help. I, I promise, I'm fine. Her protests are interrupted by another bout of coughing. Electra holds her close, rocking her against her chest. Surgical winces in sympathy. Wes watches the proceedings with a somber expression. Alright, it's time to see if your hypothesis is correct. You just... Uh, you've been sick all day? You've been sick all day. You probably felt tired in the beginning, then worse and worse. Then you started coughing blood. Sound familiar? You look over at Cedric to back you up. The same thing happened to me ever since I equipped the Bobosia sword I recovered ages ago. I was wearing it today for the first time. It was cursed. It was making me sick. Alright, I gotta pause it right here, y'all. I gotta get ready for work. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and the notification bell. Leave a super thanks for tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Happy Valentine's Day.